I am a black-necked green. As we breed on the Tibetan plateau, we are also called Tibetan cranes. Once abundant, today we count just a little over 6,000 globally. Thus, we have been classified a vulnerable species. The habitat in which we live is highly fragile. Unfortunately, it is changing fast, making it increasingly difficult for us to survive. Every year, to escape the harsh winter months, we migrate south of the Himalayas to our home away from home to a land of mystic beauty called Arunachal Pradesh. This northeastern state of India is blessed with a number of wetlands, making it our preferred destination. Come with me as I take you on a small journey to a land of white clouds and green meadows. As the sun rises over the gentle mountains, Arunachal Pradesh turns into a canvas fit for a painter's imagination. The day breaks with a thousand prayers and the turning of wheels at the monasteries. Slowly, the sleepy hill state comes to life. Not too far from this bustling market, thousands of different species of plants, insects and animals have also woken up to the gentle rays of the sun. Such rich biodiversity of Arunachal is supported by its unique geography and climate. These thick forests manage to attract heavy rainfall and retain the moisture. As a result, Arunachal is blessed with more than 800 wetlands, covering an area of about 600 square kilometer. Any land that stays wet either throughout the year or for a few months in a year is called a wetland. The wetlands that are associated with rivers or streams are called riparian wetlands. In western Arunachal, Zemithang, Sangthi and Seru are some of the riparian wetlands. Every year, as the winter approaches and the moisture in the soil decreases, the green landscape around the riparian wetlands gradually turns brown. During these months, the black-necked cranes can be seen foraging in Zemithang and Sangti. While the riparian wetlands are found at an altitude of 6,000 to 8,000 feet above the sea level, Alpine wetlands like Sela, Chabrila and Bangajang are located much higher at 13,000 to 14,000 feet. The unique soil and hydrology of wetlands support the growth of many specially adapted plants that have been used in Ayurvedic medicine for thousands of years. Some important medicinal plants found in Arunachal are a chorus calamus, locally known as sweeter. It acts as a brain tonic, coolant and drug for colic. Piper longum, locally known as pipli. It is a rejuvenator and is also used to treat respiratory infections. Vithania somnifera, locally known as ashwagandha, is a reputed Indian ginseng and is used for vitality and vigor. Sasuria obvulata, locally known as Sadup Nagpo, it is used for treating paralysis, digestive ailments and several skin diseases. Meconopsis paniculata or the golden Himalayan poppy, it is used in treating lungs and liver ailments. Aconitum ferrix, locally known as Bongna Karpo, is used for treating fevers, cholera and rheumatism. The increasing demand of medicinal plants like these in the domestic and international market has led to excessive and unsustainable harvesting from the wild. 
The enchanting forests surrounding wetlands are rich in not just medicinal plants, but also oaks, pines and rhododendron species. These are also home to the majestic yet highly endangered snow leopards. Brahmani ducks, also known as the ruddy shell ducks, are common winter visitors here. Although these birds are considered sacred by the followers of Buddhism, their numbers are dwindling due to diminishing wetland areas. A very adorable yet shy animal found in these forests is the red panda that primarily feeds on bamboo shoots. Some other animals living near the wetland areas are marbled cats, capped langurs and tuckins. Besides supporting a rich variety of plants and animals, wetlands also carry out several important functions. They act as natural buffers by soaking up huge quantities of flood water, thereby reducing the frequency and intensity of floods. They help maintain river and stream flow and prevent soil erosion. They also play an important role in maintaining groundwater level by recharging the water tables. Under the calm waters of these wetlands lies a biological supermarket, where great quantities of food are produced to support all possible links of the complex food web. Plants and microorganisms patiently filter the water and digest all pollutants. However, the wetlands are being polluted by effluents from upcoming industries as well as agricultural runoff resulting in overgrowth of algae in the water. The pollution in the water has also reduced the fish population drastically. As a result of which, the number of migratory birds visiting the wetlands has gone down considerably in recent years. Wetlands hold an irresistible appeal, not just for migratory birds, but also for tourists. Although the tourists bring additional revenue to the region, they are also responsible for solid waste accumulation near the wetlands. For the people of Arunachal Pradesh, these wetlands have been a part of their lives, culture and also livelihoods for generations. As the fertile alluvial soil found in these areas can support a number of crops, these wetlands play an important role in meeting the dietary requirement of the local population. In recent years, with increasing population, settlements around the wetlands have been on the rise, thus escalating the demand for land to build houses. This has created additional pressure on the wetlands. Buddhism, widely practiced in western Arunachal, preaches coexistence and non-violence towards all life forms. In spite of this, animals like red pandas, capped langurs, marbled cats and tuckins have come under threat due to increasing human interference in wetlands. Even the forests around the wetlands are steadily depleting with the mushrooming of several wood-based industries. Collection of fuel wood and non-timber forest products by the local population has caused additional pressure on these forests. To make things worse, global warming is also playing havoc on these wetlands. What happens next is in our hands. We can continue this exploitation till the wetlands are completely destroyed or start working towards saving these beautiful yet fragile wetlands. If you're thinking how you can help, these are some simple things you can do to make a big difference. Aforestation drives can be conducted with the help of the forest department and the community to reclaim barren forest land. Community cleaning drives can educate local population about the hazards of solid waste accumulation. Waste can be collected in pits and later used as landfills. 
Stream filters and rock checks can be constructed to prevent the accumulation of silt, debris and solid waste at the inlets and outlets of the wetlands. The most important of all conservation strategies is generating awareness among people about the need to protect the wetlands. With this goal in mind, Pragya, a non-government organization, has set up two natural heritage interpretation centers in Arunachal Pradesh. These are information centers on wetlands which promote sustainable ecotourism and also provide conservation education to the public. Pragya has also organized trainings on organic farming, vermicomposting, rotational grazing and also alternate livelihood options such as ecotourism, horticulture and pisciculture. Although some government and non-government initiatives are in place to conserve these wetlands, it is time each one of us took ownership of our rich natural heritage and worked towards its preservation.